Well, all right, all right, all right, and welcome back to another exciting episode of the Planet Gen X podcast. I'm your host, Sean. That over there is Brian, and we're so glad that you joined us today. But we'll, before we get into anything at all, first and foremost, hit that subscribe button, hit the thumbs up, hit the thumbs down if you want to. We'll take those as well. Leave us a comment. Just interact, please. Interact. He's with us. learning. Yes, I am. <laughs> Learning so much. Learning so much like I should have been unchecking that box we talked about last week. Uh, right. <laughs> for every fucking video, not the shorts. So yeah. I've been shooting myself in the foot big time for a year now. So a year later, I finally know not to check that box. I also found a couple other videos just real quick. This is nothing we have to talk about. But I also found a couple of videos that, that have mentioned the same thing. And they got like a bunch of other little tidbits. So I'm going to go through there. And by God, before this video goes up. It will have all the necessary checks and unchecks. Well, I don't know if you checked that short, but it uh, it garnered a lot more views than our normal stuff. No shit. No, I haven't. Yeah. I have actually not. Uh, I would have last night. I started to go down that ra that road to get there <laughs> to do that, yeah. and somehow I got distracted by something else and never ended. Yeah, up last there. I checked, it was still it was only double digits, but it was still significantly more than a lot of our well others. that's good this just proves the point of, of yep. unchecking that box the funny thing is i had to upload both those shorts again because i forgot to check uncheck the box both <laughs> times you can't do it after the fact like it'll be wow. there but it'll be grayed out so you got to just delete it upload everything do it again so yeah needless to say i i hope i i get it right and get all these things unchecked and checked like they're supposed to be Fingers crossed, man. Yeah, man. I can't believe how much we've been shooting ourselves in the foot because this is this is what they talk about. They're like, yeah, the small channels just get killed by YouTube with its stupid shit that it has. Yeah. You know? um, and if you don't, there's know, a lot. You don't know. Yeah. So I thought it was funny that uh, one of the things we're going to be talking about, like, <laughs> there's a portion of speech in the video that you sent me, and it you can't hear what the guy's saying because he had to mute it for copyright. Oh really? Yeah. yeah, for music in the background. Which one? Oh, well, we can tell, you can bring it up when we get yeah. to it. Anyway, how's your uh, week? Pretty good. Very busy. You know, I yeah. just got uh, you know, Boo Boo had his neutering last week. Well, I had to take Moo Moo today and get her spayed, and they they didn't even have her ready at two when I called, so they had to do it then. And then you know they closed at like five, so I was like, okay, y'all are not giving her any time to recover, so she's gonna be dead right. out of it. Uh, which she is, and now she's over there kind of holding her head up a little bit, but I just wanted to keep an eye on her. So she's in the room with us, hanging out. Boo-Boo's in the hall, uh, pacing up and down, meowing at the top of his lungs, wondering where his sister just disappeared to again today. Right. <laughs> she's been gone all day. She comes home. He's all interested. Dude, the crazy thing is I have never heard Boo. But I tell you, he's laid back as hell. He was hissing at the dog, man. As soon as I brought Moo Moo home, he, he was like hissing that dog. dog was all crowding in there and shit. And, you know, Boo Boo's oh, trying yeah. to get his look in. And I was like, I, I heard this hiss. I'm like, is that Moo Moo? Because, you know, Moo Moo can get, when she was a little girl, a little baby kitten, she could get rowdy. But, Gotta uh, protect the sibling, man, especially when, you know, yeah, they're I living just, together for most of their life, right? I just thought it was crazy. Yeah. I've never, never thought he had that in him, but apparently he does. But anywho, um, I was actually going to talk about this first thing we, the, we're going to talk about, this uh, Rabbit AI companion mm -hmm. thing that, that came out at CES. I was actually going to bring it up last week, but we had talked about CES the week prior to that and, you know, didn't talk about anything specific because obviously it hadn't happened yet. Right. And I didn't talk about CES stuff last week because every fucking buddy and their brother has videos up about what's out there and whatnot. And it's just stupid to try and compete with that. You know, I can talk about it, about how cool it is, and then you can go out there and see the thousands of videos out there, you know? Right. I might even link one or something just to say, hey, this is what I looked at anyway. But um, this is one I see most people's video. There's a lot of different videos about this particular little device because it's it's just basically trying to get rid of basically just a user AI. interface. Yeah. Like just <laughs> gone. See you later. And, and the way, you know, I was like, is this even possible right now? Like I could see, you know, down the road or whatever, but is this something that could be useful right now? And when you watch the whole video, it's, it's very interesting in how it works. I mean, like just the little, 
it looks so simple, but it's got that little camera that moves, you know, all the way around. And um, it's got the one button on one side and it's got a nice looking screen, you know, and it's, you basically just talk to it pretty much. I mean, you can do yeah. some, you know, basically what, I think there was a click and then a double click to do things. So you can, there's a little bit of button mashing. Well, I don't know from, from what I was seeing of the video you sent me, that was the one I was talking about. He, he muted himself out. Oh yeah. Uh, for copyright. But, um, it, it, I'm of two opinions. Uh, one, everything we're going to be talking about involves some sort of magic, which is, you know, this idea, you know, promoting an idea, yeah. uh, and just like, never mind the guy behind the curtain. <laughs> um, as far as the rabbit's concerned, uh, I don't know how much of that is fully integrated or how much of that you have to actually go through and train, right? Because yeah. it kind of went through both modes. Yeah. Um, so uh, to me, it kind of looked like more like a, a computer peripheral that you take with you, right? It's yeah. like you'll plug yeah. it into your computer, you'll tell it all this stuff and then detach it and take it with you. And that, yeah. And that's the thing. That's what I was like. We're so uh, entrenched in UI and in any operating system we have, most people prefer a GUI, you know, the hardcore yeah. Linux guys, they love their command prompt and, you know, more power to them. But, you know, most people prefer a GUI. And so this is kind of, a, you know, stripping all that away. And I guess basically they're saying this should just do away with your phone, too. I think that was right. a big part of what they were talking about. Um, I can see where that's a possibility that it could do that. But people are so who linked in with their apps and, and, you know, I mean, that's the main reason they're on their phone half the time. Uh, yep. You know, they don't want to ask it a question or anything like that. It might be useful for some of the stuff like they did with the Uber, ordering up an Uber or something like that. But, um, yeah, I mean, it's not playing your favorite games, which is a lot of things. The main thing many people use their phone for is when they're yep. bored and out in the way, they're, they're playing games on it. You know, Facebook, you're, you're trolling that, or, or Instagram, you know, any stuff like that. It's not going to be on that guy. Well, it does vary. I mean, like, I, I, I think a lot of the younger generation, you know, having been brought up on the idea of programming and everything, they probably have a lot more of those, those tools on there than even our generation, much less boomers. Possibly. Possibly. Um, the problem but, is they hate AI. Or they, I yeah, wouldn't say well, they hate it, but they just don't give a shit about it. Well, that's the thing. Uh, what what was LAM as opposed to using a large language? Yeah, model? I'm glad you brought that up. Yeah, it was it, large language models. What everybody's used to, but this was a language. Um, shit, how did we come so unprepared to this? I, I, <laughs> I know. It was a language. I just watched the video. Action the model. Video. Language action model. Action model. Because uh, yeah, because yes. and none of this stuff can do anything useful for us. It's like, I got a good rant. Like, we just got this Alexa recently, and it's a fucking useless clapper, man. That's basically yeah. essentially what it is. It's good for telling you a stupid joke, giving you some not very accurate weather, and acting as a light switch. smart devices. Yeah, yeah, turning things on and off. And that's about the extent of it, because I tried just asking it some stuff like, you know, hey, Alexa, when's, you know, the next, or when they'd stop making the last Okie Data Dot Matrix printer. It couldn't right. tell me that, dude. I'm not asking it to do a task for me. I'm just asking you to query the web, basically. You know. Well, I mean, again, that's probably got to do with how Google sucks now, right? Yeah. But uh, we've been harping on them for a minute here, but I'm seeing more and more um, little op pieces or whatever of like, yeah, you're not wrong. Google actually sucks. It's covered up with ads. All this, everything we've been saying now, like mainstream is acknowledging yeah finally getting around to it um yeah. shit what was the last thing i was just talking about? Yeah. you were asking you were talking about okie data well like I mean, your alexa oh the alexa yeah so um uh, the, the we were talking about uh large action models or length yeah large action models yeah. and um so Previously, up until now, and just like the Alexa, they can't really do shit for you. It's like the same thing with the Windows Copilot. You have to do everything in Copilot, and it's basically just a glorified search engine you can talk to. Um, yeah. But it can't perform actions because that would be a huge security risk. So the, lar the la large action model is actually something that can start to perform actions for you. So on this Rabbit AI, 
You know, it can actually do things as opposed to an Alexa, which can't do shit. Yeah, I guess that's probably why they made a big deal about how the authentication works and they don't serve, save like uh, passwords or spam right. accounts or anything exactly. like that to interact with models. Yeah. Or modules. Yeah. Or so APIs. I like it. We got a new buzzword, LAM, yeah. large action model. And, you know, you probably see more and more of this kind of thing. Um, and it's basically just the same thing. You know, they're just feeding it with large amounts of data to perform actions, yeah. you know, as opposed to just being able to interact with you uh, in a conversation, which is what language models do. And, and I guess that's the other side of what I was saying when I'm, I'm, I'm of two opinions on this. On the one side, there's the man behind the curtain. On the other side, there's this innovation that really needs to happen with our AI and, and interface that this kind of like goes along. And, and to be honest, I know nothing of the programming involved in it, but it sounds yeah. like it's innovative. Yeah. For um, whatever they're, definitely, they're definitely on to something, these guys. I think devices like this, mm, gosh, how, how far do I need to throw this net out? Uh, 10 years down the road, maybe, maybe even longer, maybe even 20 years, they'll be the norm. Um, where it's just a, a simple device like this that can do that. It, it might even be five years for all I know, the way AI is, you know, progressing so quickly. I mean, um, it, it's come so far in just the past year, yeah. right? Well, it just depends on how the people take to this, you know, just like they did with the iPod back in the day, because mm -hmm. it can be that, you know, if the people take to it like that, then it'll happen very quickly to where people let go of their, their user interface. But that's what I see the biggest hurdle is people g giving up access to their user is your <laughs> their user interface, user interface. <laughs> and their apps. I mean, like yeah. people are really clinging to those apps. Well, I mean, I don't know. Like, I think the people that are really clinging on to their apps, I, I I don't see that this would really replace you know. People who are addicted to Instagram or Spotify or Musify or, you know, whatever you're using these apps for. Yeah. It, it really just seems to be, you know, they they call it a companion, right? And mm -hmm. it seems to be marketed that way. Yeah. Um, yeah. But I just wonder how many people will take a phone and a companion with them and then maybe even have their smartwatch on at the same time, you know. Yeah. Um, the Uber techs will love it, but they're a few far between and they're not going to make a company. <laughs> yeah yeah but uh yeah so it's just some cool i i really enjoyed the presentation we watched i'll put a link uh to the video uh in fact i'm sure i'll have some of the video in this little deal but um yeah i'm i'm interested to see where this company goes and and who tries to ride their coattails and, and whether it's you know it ends up being a good idea or not it, it'll be interesting to see it got a lot of attention yeah that's all i know for sure of course AI i was all that's all CES was. AI, AI, I was going to say it's probably covered up with AI, right? Yeah, it definitely was. Um, down to your toilets, I think. I know I saw <laughs> some toilets there. So next, man, I almost, I kind of wish I had gotten uh, Mr. Odom here for this one because I know I had a conversation with him years ago about how far away we were tech-wise and what we could do to have a holodeck, you know, and really it comes down to the last two things i really think we have everything and now we have one of those two things was a floor that moves that move right. that can move you or you can walk on that just like you're walking in place like on a treadmill but you could go in any direction you want to and the floor can adjust to you right uh, i had some ideas in my head back in the day and he had told me that some people already had something you know uh kind of for vr very expensive something, you know, that kind of did what I was talking about. Basically, a, a treadmill that can move in any direction is the idea I had at first. Right. Um, well, I mean, that's basically what what we're talking about is. Ah, yeah. Well, first of all, let's let's just kind of lead into to the the man behind it first. Okay. Yeah. Um. So I was checking out this video that called my eye because I love watching, uh, even though I despise Disney and what they're doing right now. I yeah. do love the stuff about their Imagineers and anything that's, you know, about how they make, you know, some of the park animatronics or whatever they do just for the magic of what they do. Because a lot of the technology has come from Disney over the yeah. years. Uh, 
there's been a lot of patents. And one of the inventors, the uh, a senior Disney Imagineer, is named Lanny Snoot. Sorry, Lanny Smoot. Smoot, yeah. And um, he's been with them a long time, very long time. And he has got dozens, uh, more than dozens, probably hundreds of patents through Disney. And well, like many famous and well i i would call him famous but many well-established engineers doing uh amazing things he he was from bell legacy right oh yeah yeah he comes from the bell labs that was what he was doing before he went to disney and uh those guys we used to you know when uh brian and i were younger doing through the explorers and stuff we used to go and hang around our local bell and it's some pretty cool stuff going on there yeah. Um, and then very, very smart people working there. Very smart people. But um, he is actually getting inducted soon into the National Inventors Hall of Fame, which interestingly, one other Disney employee has made, and it was Walt Disney himself that was that employee. And so Larry Smoot will be the, I'm sorry, Lanny. I can't, I can't get this guy's <laughs> name right, can I? Lanny is the only other uh, gentleman from Disney who's ever going to get, or who's going to get this award so far. Um, I had a problem with his name too, so don't feel bad. You, yeah. you, you, you want to make it something more common like Lenny or something. Yeah, so. it was all different kinds of word, uh, names I can make out of his name. But um, yeah. So one of the newer patents that, that he showed off in this video was this moving floor. And it, it's... It's hard to describe, really. Um, it looks like a bunch of river rocks to me, like little river stones that are all the same size, and they're laid out in an array. Yeah. And, uh, you know, it's probably, what, like three feet? It's it's yeah, not a circle, three. but it's like an octagon or something like that, and it's like three yeah. by three, maybe four by four or something like that. It's not a very large area. Right. But... It's plenty large enough to move. He was sitting in a chair at one point inside it, and that chair was moving him all around the area. Um, it's plenty enough room for at least two people, maybe three, to walk in. And yeah. uh, this floor is amazing to watch, and we definitely will have video of it uh, when when y'all see this. And, you know, he's just standing, and he's walking like he normally walks, and these things... You can hardly tell, like, even how they're doing anything because they are. You can see them moving, but you just can't even make out what they're doing. Yeah. You just have to assume, you know, they're just skating him around somehow. But, uh, yeah, it's wild-looking stuff. It really is. Well, uh, yeah, I was sitting there. Uh, try, I still haven't quite figured out uh, the exact way that it works. The, lo the low-hanging fruit, you know, most people would probably go through as some kind of conveyor tech which it may be with uh, some of the new shapes we've discovered over the past decade or so. Yeah, um, I'm weird stuff to mind weird the weird uh, tires they have on these forklifts now. Have you seen those? I have. They can go sideways and whatnot. Yeah. So, yeah, something. it must be along the lines of something like that. Um, but that, to me, in the modern day, was one of the big things that held us back from having true blue holodecks. The other biggest thing, and this is the this is the problem that I I don't know if we'll ever solve. If we do, if it might be a hundred years, might be twenty five. Who knows? Especially with the help of AI and the, how fast it's growing nowadays, um, is the holodecks in Star Trek actually produce solid objects for you to touch, pick up, and right. use? And basically, those objects, it's it's. It's linked in like with the uh, transporter system. So it's bringing objects in and they have kind of a, a force field around them. And basically it's that force field that you're grabbing onto. Yeah. And uh, it, it's a lot more in-depth in, in how it works. But basically that's it. I mean, that's why in some of the episodes you saw they were using the, hol the uh, transporter system to try and bring Moriarty's girlfriend, you know, and make her real and everything. That's... That's why, because it's all photons and stuff like that. Photons and force fields, that's what they call it. I believe that's yeah. the name of the episode, isn't it? Um, Maybe. <laughs> but, uh, or I, I know it's the name of a Star Trek episode. But, so even without that, though, I think we're, with the floor and everything, we're so close to, uh, we, have, we could do a holodeck now. Well, um, there's a lot of applications you could just use haptics for, but... 
yeah it, and at, you won't be able to pick up point, anything and, t- and feel it right yeah but you, you'll be able to pick stuff up sure you can do that now right yeah. so it's just being able to be in this room so you'll have to be in a room that does all the projecting and whatnot um you may early versions you may still have to wear some glasses but i think you know everything else you'll be able to pick up stuff you just want me like you say you could have some haptic gloves or whatever that kind of give you the sensation of it maybe a whole bodysuit to give you some sensation sensation but um yeah i think we're there i think this is it man i really do maybe i mean you saw you've seen the video so i mean based on that because i don't think you knew where i was going did you? I, I mean i yeah i didn't put anything about this being a holodeck or anything this is the whole reason i brought this up was just as soon it. as i saw him move I, I i made that link with you i was like yeah he's thinking holodeck <laughs> i have i don't know what it is about me man i'm like i just want to see this holodeck thing happen before we die you know um and i think it's so close Somebody's going to have them. Like, dude, within five years, there'll be somebody that has... Remember the old uh, the QZAR stuff where we go play laser tag and stuff? It'll be like a whole hollow uh, place. I know Odom, and I know he couldn't talk about it, man. I know at one time he was working on some kind of uh, laser tag uh, AR deal. And, yeah, I remember um, that. I'm sure they're still probably still working on it, or maybe maybe it's a project that was just for, you know, tech. Well, if I recall correctly, he... when it, when I talked to him about it, he was under like, I don't know if it was an infinite or just really, really long term NDA. Oh yeah, no doubt, dude. Like there is nothing like I really want to have him on, especially because I feel like we're going to be talking about some of these Apple glasses and stuff like that in the near future. As much as I can't stand that stuff, I think it is very relevant. Um, yeah. It could be. People seem to think it's the next iPhone for Apple, but I, I just don't know if I see that. But. Having him on for stuff like that, I think he can, he can talk to that. But yeah, I, I am fully aware. We've talked about it, he and I. Um, he's under some heavy NDAs, so we definitely couldn't get into what he's working on. But I mean, he, he it, it was enough that he mentioned that. We knew that it was something like that anyway. Um, so it yeah. seems pretty cool. I don't even know. I can't even remember what he said because I don't know. I mean, you may have had to infer that it was a laser tag deal or something. Right, like yeah. <laughs> but uh, anyway. It's involving lasers. <laughs> Could you just imagine, though, uh, just cues are in a holodeck type situation, man. That would be pretty cool. I could, but, man. I mean, you could do so like, many other things. Yeah, well, I, I was thinking there need, there were, there would have, have to be a lot of padding involved. Oh, sure. Yeah. <laughs> like, see, but that's the beauty of it, too. Like, you could actually have, remember how our cues are places had, like, places you could hide behind and stuff like that. And they did have some kind of foam around them, you know, to where you bust your head on it. Um, but all of that could be in there, right? There could be stuff in there. And then the the um, projection could make it what? It could make it a metal plate, you know, whatever you wanted it to be, uh, you know, a wooden um, fence, something like that. You know, whatever you wanted it to be, it could be up to the imagination of whoever programs those holodecks. I can imagine some company having like three or four rooms, just like the QSR place. You go in there, man, you, you, you dial in, they have, you know, a bunch of different scenarios, like, just like quarks, man. You get the yeah. you get the love stuff, and you get <laughs> you know that's gonna happen, man. I guarantee oh, yeah. you. Listen, if porn can make them break the whether beta or VHS comes out on top, they can make or break whether or not uh, hollow decks or, or just hollow suites in general become. Well, you thing. know, to to bring up porn when I when I saw that link at first, not knowing anything about it. You know, it was an AI rabbit companion, <laughs> right. what I thought. And I was like, rabbit? Yeah, we all... I know one brand of rabbit. Everybody knows about the <laughs> rabbit, man, for sure. Yeah, not that rabbit. But listen, it wouldn't surprise right. me a bit if CES won, like, next year you come and there, there is the rabbit dildo with AI. All right, yeah. No doubt. It could happen. And then they'll get sued. There'll be, like, this massive lawsuit going on between the rabbit companion and the rabbit dildo companion. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Lord. But uh, yeah, so thank you, Lanny Smoot, man. You've brought us so many great inventions many people don't even know and have enjoyed at the Disney parks or whatever. I'm sure these have you know, gotten moved into regular life for some things yeah. um, and used for so many wonderful things. But I look forward to seeing this particular patent get uh, leaped on very quickly. And who knows uh, uh, whether they'll license that quickly or not. Yes, thank I you, and congratulations. Yes, very much congratulations. 
because we know you'll be watching this, right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> He'll be a big fan by the end of this, right? <laughs> right. Um, moving on into the gaming world, man. Uh, I saw a little teaser the other day about somebody saying that there was an Indiana Jones game coming in 2024, and they had some... I don't know where they got the video from, but it was some random Indiana Jones. I think it was like a test for this game. That, at least that's what they alluded to. And like Indiana Jones didn't look anything like Harrison Ford at all. Which kind of had me a little concerned, like, you know, where are we going to end up? Is this going to be a Indiana Jones that doesn't look like Harrison Ford when we all know that's what Indiana Jones looks like? And thank God, we finally got the trailer, his gameplay reveal trailer for Indiana Jones, the Indiana Jones game that's coming out. Yeah. And I got to say, I liked what I saw. It may not be something I play. I'll say this. Back when I first saw the very first Uncharted game in 2007, I thought, wow, somebody missed the boat on an IP putting the slap in Indiana Jones on this. Like, this would have been, and not that Uncharted is not a big game, but this would have been, like, way bigger if you'd have just skinned it with Indiana Jones shit. Well, yeah, but, I mean, like, while there had been Indiana Jones games in the past, yeah. there really hasn't been like a, a a ip that has nailed it right there there hasn't been a company that that has taken that ip and run with it no they have really right. uh the best indiana jones game i ever played was a pinball game and that was an awesome pinball game it was, I, I was an awesome that one right up there with the uh twilight zone yes yeah it one was of my great favorite. and the terminator 2 one's really good too yeah back in the day um it did look like Indiana Jones. I'll say that much. Uh, Felt like it too. Yeah. From the stage. Oh, very much so. The the whole uh, ant, uh, antagonist was uh, very much an Indiana Jones character. I thought uh, yeah. it seemed to definitely be Indiana Jones. But I thought this game is probably just going to be like Uncharted, pretty much, or Tomb Raider for those of you who are a lot older and never played Uncharted. It to me, Uncharted is just uh, modern day Tomb Raider. Um. I don't know if there's really any other games close to those two being like that, but I think that Indiana Jones just would fit right in there. And I could be very wrong about where it falls. I just, Maybe. I don't think there's any other, and the gameplay looked great. Don't get me wrong, but I think the, the for the most part, it's going to be like an uncharted game. Yeah. Well, I mean, you see some puzzles, there's some action. So it, it kind of seems to go along that. Yeah. That line. The only thing that could make it cooler is if they just allowed you to go up a world and not set you on a path. Like, it's okay to have a path. Like, I think that's where the Harry Potter game did very well. You had a path, you had a story, but I could go run and fuck off and do whatever I wanted to, you know, all the time and get back to that main story whenever I wanted to. So if they handle it like that, I could be very pleased. Um, yeah. Well, one of the things I... I... For a long time, I wanted to get involved in uh, video games, obviously being a gamer back in the day. But uh, there was this point, probably around high school or something like that, where I was just like, there is a lack of story involved in a lot of game. A lot of your side quests are just kind of like, yeah, whatever, you know, radio towers, blah, blah, blah. Uh, but, you know, certain elements of the character you're playing don't really come out a lot of times. Right. And I really wanted to, to kind of like up the game of the characters that you're interacting with, that you're playing as the scenarios, like, you know, take away from the cookie cutter process of making a game and make it like a story, right? Like one of these great stories that might have been why I was so interested in Death Stranding. Because it, it's definitely along more of the lines you're talking about. It is, definitely. And that, that was kind of the thing I, I wanted to do. But, I mean, it's obviously there now, right? <laughs> right, yeah. And, bro, I feel you, man. It's, like, so hard when you want to be, a, like, an independent game developer. It's a very hard thing to take on. Right. Um, you have grand ambitions. That's one thing I liked about uh, that that pirate software guy that we were talking about last week, Thor. Um, he encourages it. He encourages people to get out there, and he says, "Make 
make games. He shows the guy like Five Nights at Freddy guy, all the games that he had leading up to that. A bunch of just bullshit ass games. You know, just whatever you can put out there on Steam. Get you some experience and, uh, you know, you'll get what get where you need to be. Just keep making. That's the point. Yeah. Keep doing Well, I mean, Darkest Dungeon, uh, both of those are, are games, in my opinion, that, you know, you're your average like a casual gamer probably wouldn't take a a second look at right yeah uh yeah, but the avid gamers, gamers. Yeah, yeah the the people who enjoy brain teasers or like really hard hard parts of games and stuff like that they will find your game they will love it and they will yep. expound their love all, all over the internet <laughs> Yeah, people just want a game, man. You'll be so surprised at the kind of games people play in this day. Not you, but like our listening audience would be surprised at how basic some games can be for some people. Yeah. Um, that just like, uh, take, uh, what's that one? Sunset, do, do, is it Sunset Valley? Is that it? Oh, uh, Sundew Valley. What you're talking about, and I'm drawing a blank now. Is, it do, is Sundew Valley or do something like that? Yeah, I think. It, yeah, but anyway, y'all, I'll, I'll try and put some up. Maybe it corrects it. And uh, it's uh, you know, it's like a classic looking game, like old school '80s RPG back when yeah. uh, Final Fantasy looked the same. Um, and people still dig that, man. And it's not necessarily us old fogies that grew up with it that dig it. Because these kids, man, they come up and they're like, oh, you know what? This is pretty cool. I've never seen this before. It's just different. Yeah, they're few and far between. But they still, they you know, they get into some of this old stuff just like we did. We were like, wow, man, look at what my parents, I just found my parents' album collection. Well, I, I think, honestly, we've kind of directed them, right? Because we have this love for lo-fi and we put it out there. And it's something that's not like everything else. Yeah, she's she's up and about. Oh shit! You saw that and I didn't. <laughs> anyway. She's been moving around a little bit back there. Actually, I haven't um, been paying attention now. Yeah, but all I was saying is, you know, it was something new, something different, and uh, I I feel like it was our generation that put that out there for the younger generation to find. Yeah, and you know. That's the thing about lo-fi. You know, when you have lo-fi stuff, it forces you to concentrate on other things than, you know, the, the spit and polish. Right on. Yeah, I agree. And, uh... Well, anyway. Just wanted to say that that, uh... That Indiana Jones game looks pretty cool. No doubt. I may have to give it a look in because it's not... Those games, those two Mario games, is Uncharted, and it's just not something I've ever been down with. My dad loved Uncharted. Oh, yeah. he's, he's had every one of them. Absolutely loved them. So maybe I'll, I might. The get last game my dad it. played was Pac Man. <laughs> <laughs> my dad's pretty hip for his age, man. I gotta say, he's always trying to play games and whatnot. But, um, yeah. Cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's about all I got. That man. It? Yeah, that's Is that all. Got. The, now I all the this, news I got, for printing. I got a dog here wanting to get in my lap for some reason. Y'all want to see Pepper since we're pretty much done? Pepper. There's Pepper. Staying warm. Yep. Got her little shirt on. She uh, is going to get cold again tonight. She has a little hoodie that she wears when she goes outside. But yeah, and Mumu is just. <laughs> She's half out of it, so she's just kind of walking around yeah. and sitting down. And... <laughs> just trying to stay level. <laughs> yeah, I wish she would have just stayed there and laid out, you know. I did manage to get her in the to the, the litter box right when we got home, so that worked out well. That's good. I was like, please don't piss in my, in my carrier. <laughs> yeah, love my babies. I'm glad they're, uh, glad they're both had their stuff done. I'll be happy when she's not hurting anymore or yeah. being in pain. But anywho, we thank you so much for you guys joining us today. We'll see you back here next week. And you know what, man? We didn't even talk about this being the 50th anniversary, 50th uh, episode. It is. Yeah, wow. We make a big deal about it and everything. And I didn't even say a word about it. But yeah, this is the 50th episode. So we were... Happy 50. Yeah, happy 50 episodes. We just started yeah. this a year ago. So uh, yeah. I want to say it was like the first week in January last year, wasn't it? We I, I don't know the exact year. time, but it, it's been a year yeah no doubt so 
cool. That's awesome. I should have made a bigger deal out of it, but well, we'll see you at a hundred. No big deal. Right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> no worries there. Save it for next year. That's right. All right. But as always, guys, we thank you so much for joining us. Be excellent to each other. And Brian and I will see you on the flip side. Peace out, y'all. Say bye, Pepper. Bye, Pepper. Bye, bye. Pepper. Bye. <laughs> yeah, love the Pepper. Bye, y'all.